Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's weekly bump for Monday, October 31st. Happy Halloween, everybody. Hope you guys had an amazing weekend. So as always, we have three piles. Pile one, we are using fluorite. Pile two, we are using a pyrite. And pile three, we are using amethyst. So go ahead and take a moment and allow yourself to feel which pile is calling you the most. Now, not everyone always feels intuitively drawn, and that's perfectly fine. You can always just randomly select a pile, and the chances are there will still be a message in there for you somewhere. But if you would like to pause the video, please do so now. Um, and timestamps for each pile will be found in the description box and the comment thread down below. And don't forget that if you are a member on my website, janeinternational.com, that you can log in and access the extended weekly readings that we do for each zodiac sign. All right, see you in just a sec. All right, pile number one, you selected the fluorite. So let's go ahead and see what comes through. So we start off with one of my intuitive cards. All right, I'm feeling like with this whole like mess of things going on all over the place right here, I feel like there's something going on in your life or in your mind or in your heart that is trying very, very hard to align and the external world is throwing a lot of information at you that's making it very difficult. It may be confusing the process at hand. And I think one of the problems is that you're seeing truth in so many things um, that it's hard for you to lock into something. You're finding truth in different people's opinions and different people's beliefs and different what you know like maybe there's even a religious context to this you know with jupiter coming into pisces though it has a lot to do with what we believe and when mars is going retrograde now and he's only just started his retrograde as of yesterday so with mars going retrograde now he's he's kind of going back and questioning things questioning beliefs while saturn now going direct in aquarius is here trying to find and trying to establish some structure, but still pushing those boundaries. You certainly are being asked to go beyond your comfort zone right now in terms of what you believe. Um, and it may not be easy and it may create a lot of cognitive dissonance. You know, there may be some head heart misalignment going on right now because you're, you're, you're being challenged. And the things that maybe you've held very closely to your heart for a long time are starting to crumble in light of new truths. And this is when people usually, um, you know, they can get very angry or they can get really stubborn. But I promise you that if you go with the flow here and you allow the universe to carry you to where you need to be, you will find a more solid path. And you will find something to lock into for your next chapter in life. And eventually that will crumble down as it always does. And you'll develop a new one as we do time and time and time again throughout the course of our lives. But sometimes those moments feel a little bit more intense than others. And I think right now I'm seeing really sharp, jagged motion. And it's just like you, you may be feeling just, I don't know, like just the really sharp edges of of this new information. And you may feel attacked. You may feel invalidated. You may feel some guilt or shame, something like that. But I do know that eventually you are gonna collide with the proper path. So we have the wizard, use your skills to aid others. And the hourglass, time is of the essence. So with all of this jagged motion going on in your life, the one thing that we know for sure we can always fall back in is being there for others. Taking the energy and the attention off of ourselves sometimes, getting out of our own heads and getting out of our own worlds and, and contributing more positively to other people, whether that's our children or our parents or our community members or our friends or our colleagues, whatever the case may be. 
and and really being there for them in whatever capacity they need as long as you are able right using your skills it's not just you know doing things you're not good at right you don't want to do home repairs if you have no idea what you're doing but um so let you know like if you have specific talents or specific sets of knowledge like let's say you are an accountant right maybe coming in and helping someone get their finances in order right that kind of thing that would be a really, really, really good place to find some peace because I don't know that this is the most peaceful experience right now. And I don't know that you could just sit there and do nothing. I actually think with the Mars retrograde, you are going to have to keep your hands busy. You're going to have to be doing things. You're going to have to be productive. And, you know, you may be in a little bit more of a mechanical mindset right now where you're just sort of, you know, doing what you know needs to be done in order to accomplish the goal without a lot of thought right now. And I think the more methodical you can be with the real world things, the more space you'll have for this existential moment. Now, this is just a moment. It may not last that long. It may not last forever, but it is a moment that does need to be honored because this is what growth feels like. All right. And time is of the essence. I feel like the universe is throwing something at you very specifically, uh, because you're needing to figure this out for something that is yet to come. All right. That, 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 that this is a critical, uh, revision and a critical crisis. I, well, I want to, I want to say crisis, although you may not perceive it as a crisis. You're like, Jane, what are you talking about? Like I norm, I'm normal. Like, well, I don't, it's not a crisis in my life. So maybe it's not feeling like that, but if there are beliefs that are changing and you are changing your whole school of thought, there does seem to be some component, like it needs to happen soon. All right. Because with Saturn now coming through Pisces, in March, that's happening in March and Pluto is coming into Aquarius. Like we need to be solid internally. Um, we need to be prepared for a lot of the unexpected. We need to be prepared for certain downturns. We need to be prepared for external, like things that are beyond our control types of situations. So the more solid and rooted we are with our creator and source, the more likely we are to be, um, to be safe. So here we have the nine of coins. The seven of swords. and judgment. Okay. I love the judgment because this is that moment of clarity that comes out and it says, you know, you're, you are going to come up out of the darkness. Don't worry. And I think many of you are wanting to come up out of that darkness. You know, you're wanting to come into places of, of greater consciousness and to have more awareness and to, to operate from a more, um, I don't want to say enlightened place. I think that's a little cheesy, but just, just from a, a more intelligent place, a more spiritually intelligent place. Um, I, I know I'm talking really slow and I'm not, I don't mean to be talking really slow. I'm so sorry about that. I just, I'm like, maybe I'm picking up on this. It's just, my brain is going a million different directions right now. And maybe that's Mars, Mars retrograde in Gemini too. <laughs> maybe that's a little bit astrological. Uh, but you know, I just, I don't think you should like you, your spirit, your heart, your mind are going through enough changes. I don't want to see you making huge material or external changes in your life right now. Not with this nine of coins. I feel like what you're building and what you're doing is really good. It's really solid. It's, you know, it's producing well, and, and it's going to take you to where you want to go in a more materialistic sense. So nine of coins, keep it going, keep that persistence, keep that consistency and, and all will be well. Like, I don't know that anyone needs to be aware of like what's going on internally. 
And it's not that you're hiding it, not that you're faking it. It's just that you may not be ready to share it because you haven't really landed anywhere and you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot by making any sort of sudden or jerky move movements or random haphazard decisions, especially as we're building up to this full moon eclipse uh, in uh, full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus conjunct Uranus, you know, you may be operating a little bit more cautiously because you just don't know, you know, and, and you don't know where you're going to land. You don't know what ultimately is going to come out of all this new information where this is ultimately going to guide you. So I, I think right now you're just sort of accepting and receiving and finding truth in as many areas and as many things as you possibly can, even if it, challenges or frustrates you because it is coming up against your core belief system. Um, but you will take a moment to try to find the truth in it. You will try to take a moment to find out why people believe this, or why is this information coming to me when it is so counter to everything that I believed up to this point? But there is a collision moment. There's a point where this is all going to collide and you're going to be like, okay, you're going to be locked in to a deeper truth. I'm not saying you're operating from any lies or anything, but I do think you are coming into a deeper truth. And I do think that's a beautiful thing and it's a beautiful moment and one that I don't want to see you shoot yourself in the foot in just because you lock into something a little bit too soon or prematurely, okay? Um, so allow time to pass, allow the eclipse to happen, give Mars a little while to get, you know, settled in his retrograde degree. You know, he's not going to be going direct, uh, this for the rest of the year. So he'll be retrograde for the rest of the year. Um, so we will get a little comfortable with this retrograde motion over the next couple of months. Um, so just give it a couple weeks and then maybe you'll be able to make some, some bigger moves. But as it stands, I would say, just keep, keep the outside, keep the external going like clockwork as much as you can. Okay. All right. Kind of a weird reading by a one, but, um, but yeah, I think that's everything. So I'll leave you with that. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello, pile number two, you selected the pyrite. So let's go ahead and see what comes through for you guys here. Okay, I'm, um, the words, the writing is on the wall is what's coming to me the most. The writing is on the wall. And I feel like you are headed toward kind of a, a really important moment in your life where you have, I'm seeing three doors here with these three squares. It's like you have three doors in front of you. Now, I'm not saying that you're only going to pick one door because I don't think you are. I actually think you're going to pick all three doors because they're all sort of leading to that same little swirly place. So all three doors are going to lead you somewhere and you're actually somehow going to open all of them which means you may have multiple projects in front of you. You may have something at work. You may have something going on in your relationship and something with your children or whatever the case may be, right? You have, you have these different areas or departments of your life. And each one of these departments is going through a change. Now it may not be a huge change, but it is still a change nonetheless. Now the word change seems to be like, uh, I mean, around a lot right now, just given the current astrological environment, um, we are all being asked to change and we are being asked to change by means of our own behavior. Meaning we have to change the way we go about doing something or interacting with someone or communicating with someone. We have to change the habits around those things. Um, and because we have these three areas that are evolving may not feel like the, I feel like the momentum is going to be very, very slow at first. And as we make decisions this week, we may make a phone call. It may be something small, right? We make a phone call. We schedule that appointment. We pay that person that money. We have that conversation, whatever the case is, we're going to start to see things coming together and it's going to come together in a very roundabout, strange, weird kind of a way. But it is actually representing the sort of crash and burn 
of the old. And this is a very subtle process. It's not like a huge dark night of the soul or anything. It's a very subtle release, barely even noticeable. And this is happening through micro decisions. And yet at the same time, the momentum that they are perpetuating, right? It's just going to build and build and build and build. And it's going to end up being this whole, this whole big new life. Eventually it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? With that kind of swirl there just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And eventually you're going to find yourself in a, in a whole new place. And you'll realize the impact of the very small decisions that you made today, the decision to work a little bit harder, the decision to confront that person, the decision to pay that money or to pay off this debt or whatever the case is, those small decisions are creating a better and brighter future for yourself. Jealousy leads to downfall. Okay. I'm going to pull out one more card before we start talking here. Jealousy leads to downfall. And then we have the forces of nature favor you. All right, look, jealousy can be an extraordinarily useful emotion. All right. Um, I learned this from Mel Robbins a couple years ago, right? Where if we, we take the thing that we are most jealous of, they have that relationship. They look so happy. I'm jealous of their money. Oh my gosh, I can't believe they can afford that car. You know, all those things. Um, you can either use that to implode or you can use it to inspire yourself because all jealousy is, is just an indication that that's what you want. It's what you want, but you don't have it, but there are choices that you can make to go get it. And the jealousy is likely what is driving this machine right now, which I don't see technically as a bad thing. Now, if this was envy, I think envy can get very sour, but jealousy is something that kind of stirs up within us a little bit. And then it passes, it can pass depending on how we utilize it or leverage it. It can go on to become envy later on if, if we don't address it accordingly. But the forces of nature favor you, meaning there's a big push behind you here. You have a lot of support from, you know, source, God, the creator, right? You have all of this angelic and, and wonderful support. And they, they are, I'm not going to say they're going to save you from your situation because that's not, you're not being saved here, um, but you are being supported and there are going to be options. And, and please do not underestimate the effects and the impact of these micro decisions. I think that's going to be one of our biggest mistakes is, um, is underestimating the impact of the micro decisions, underestimating the impact of sending that email, you know, or setting something in motion. It's going to be a beautiful process to watch yourself go through. We have the beautiful star card for you here. We have the hanged man in the reversal. We have what else for pile two? Hold on. We have, oh my gosh, the sun and the star. And I actually, I, I feel that um, these being, you know, luminaries, there is that divine light. This is like the divine light of the, of the creator here coming through and guiding you. And, and you can, you can have so much faith and so much trust in the higher power here. You can allow yourself to go with the flow. And I think that's one of the reasons why you're capable of doing this right now. Maybe in the past you had held back or you had resisted because of some reason. Maybe it was a good reason. Maybe it wasn't a good reason. I don't know, but maybe you held yourself back for some reason, but I think those days are over the hanged man reverse. It's time for you to get down off that tree. It's time for you to find that firm footing. And it is time for you to finally embrace and envelop this person that you're wanting to become, right? There are no more excuses anymore. Um, because I think, you know, like the jealousy is stirring up a lot of desire to want something, to want to become, it has nothing to do with getting material things. Really. It's more about becoming that person. It's more about who you are in terms of your goodness, your value, your love, your generosity, and, and all of that. 
Um, usually this happens when we are not sharing as much as we know we could, when we're not giving as much as we know we could. Now, when I say giving, please do not misconstrue what I'm saying. I don't mean like this terrible codependent, super self-sacrificial situation in which you lose or get taken advantage of. All right. That's not what I mean by giving. It's not what I mean by generosity. All right. There's usually boundaries when compassion is involved. All right. There's always a boundary there and it doesn't require you to lose for the sake of someone else to win. All right. It's usually a win-win situation, but I, I, like I said, with the first thing that I said with this car is like the writing is on the wall. There's like a destiny or a fate here to a degree. And you'll start to see miraculous things occur. And this may be the right person showing up a happenstance meeting, right? Oh, I was just thinking about you. What a crazy synchronicity to run into you here. That kind of thing. You'll probably start to notice those types of small miracles occurring in your life over the course of the next few months, especially now with Jupiter back in Pisces, there is a little bit more of a magical quality in the sky right now because of that. Um, the universe I think is giving you a second chance with this Mars retrograde in Gemini. It's giving you a second chance to get your mind right to get your psychology right, to get, you know, cause I, maybe with Mars through Gemini over the past couple of months, we have been kind of collecting a lot of information and we've been spreading ourselves a little bit thin, but now we get to take all that we have collected and make some sort of sense and order out of it so that we can make good decisions for ourselves and actually leverage that into something incredible and make our wishes come true. And and I, I think there's a, a, a match here between our own free will, which we have to utilize with good judgment and aligned in goodness and good intentions with faith and all of that. And there's an element of destiny and there's like this meeting point coming forward here for you. And, um, and there's a lot of energy in your favor, which is really, really good. So, you know, small micro decisions every single day on a moment to moment basis, even you open the refrigerator and you say, okay, I could eat this or I could eat that, which is better for me right now, right? What does my body need? Do I wake up and go work out or do I wake up and watch TV immediately before, while I'm getting ready? Like what's the better choice for me? All right. So moment to moment choice by choice, asking yourself, what's the better decision and not self-sabotaging because there's always that temptation to say, well, I know what the better decision is, but I'm not going to do it because it doesn't feel pleasurable for me right now. I actually am feeling, I'm not saying you're completely eliminating pleasure and that life can't be enjoyable, but it's like, what type of pleasure are you looking for? You know, are you looking for the pleasure of self-respect or are you looking for the more hedonistic pleasure? All right. And I think you're going more for the pleasure of self-respect because that's more beneficial and longer lasting. All right. We're going for longevity here. All these small things, it's, it's all for the common good. All right. All right. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you so much. Pile number two, have a fantastic week and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, pile number three, let's go ahead and get started with this intuitive deck here. So I'm kind of feeling a quality of rising from the dust. Now, I don't mean like rising from the ashes, like a crash and burn. I don't know that you've recently gone through a crash and burn, although maybe some of you have, but this isn't about like your failure or anything like that. This is about becoming clear and not f you for yourself, not you in your own mind, but you becoming clear in the eyes of others. It's like in the movies, you know, at the very end, so it's like a mission impossible or a James Bond movie or something where at the end, there's usually like a huge explosion, right? Always. And then at the end, there's like the, the main characters coming out of the smoke right? And as you emerge out of the smoke, that image of you becomes more and more and more clear. Now, it's not that you care what people think of you because maybe you do, maybe you don't. That's not the point of this, but it's just like your value, 
your gifts, your talents, your generosity, your kindness, other people are starting to see that. And they see it in a real way, which is instilling a great deal of respect in them towards you. And that likely is going to lead to something good in your life, meaning like a promotion or earning more money or finding an incredible partner, whatever the case may be, whatever your goals are in life right now, it's going to lead you closer to that. Because when, when, when you hold yourself in high esteem, it, it may take a while, but it doesn't take long for people to really see you. And I think they're starting to really see you for that incredible, beautiful person that you truly are and that you know you are. And maybe there was a, quite a journey to get here, a journey to, to really love yourself, a journey to, um, to respect what you are. And so now to have that validated externally, as much as I would like to sit here and talk about, oh, how we don't need other people's validation, I also think to a significant degree, we are social creatures. You know, we, we do crave that. We do want to belong. We want to belong and we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves and we want to contribute something positively to the world. And in order for us to do that, we need the feedback. And I think you're receiving incredible feedback right now. Okay, so this says, imagination clouds your judgment. See what else comes through for pile three. The gate, a barrier keeps you from your goal. I don't know that this is moving forward. I think this is actually reminiscent of the past. This is the cloud, right? Rising from the dust. This is this big cloud right here, all right? It's these two things. The barrier that kept you from your goal and the imagination clouds your judgment. I, I think there was a, a significant skew in your psychology. Now, I'm not blaming everything on you. I'm not saying everything is your fault. Definitely not the case. We're all co-creators here. Um, but there is a certain degree in which we have accountability, but sometimes we don't know what we're doing when we're doing it. We don't know that we are maybe living a little bit more in some kind of, kind of imaginary reality. We don't intend for that. That's not our aim, but sometimes we get lost in that. And maybe we get lost a little bit in our perception of ourselves and we get lost in how we think other people perceive us. And there's like that feedback loop there. And for some reason, this has a lot to do with how people are perceiving us right now. And you may be feeling that and you may be making up a story. Please um, please be very careful to not be writing a story in terms of what you think other people think about you, especially. I'm not saying your intuition is not, you know, on par with things, but I do think your judgment in terms of perception and other people's perception right now, that there is like a little bit of a barrier. There's a boundary there and there has been, which may have been one of the reasons why, it's been hard for you to perceive the fact that you actually are emerging from the dust. The barrier that's kept you from your goal has been self-perception, has been your positioning. Have you positioned yourself as a high value individual? Have you positioned yourself as someone who is knowledgeable and wise? Or have you positioned yourself as someone who doesn't feel deserving or worthy? Again, I'm not saying everything lies on your shoulders, but there is some stuff that lies on your shoulders. And so this is about for the things that you can control now, um, getting out of your own way in that regard. And I think the more and more you get out of your own way in terms of reducing the limiting beliefs that you may have, hold, may have held, 
that by getting out of your own way, you'll actually notice other people falling in line and viewing you the way you view you. If your view of yourself improves, other people's view of you will improve as well. We have the High Priestess in the reversal. We have the Four of Cups reversed. I actually think you are letting go of using your brain right now, Mars retrograde in Gemini, you're, use, you're letting go of using your brain to figure things out. In fact, I actually feel like you're giving up on the idea of trying to figure things out. You're, try, you're not trying to discern. I'm reminded of that one Sex in the City episode. Uh, again, I always age myself whenever I reference that show. I did grow up with Sex in the City, <laughs> okay? Um, but that one episode when Carrie is dating Berger, and um, they're talking, you know, they go to dinner and they're talking about with Miranda, like mixed signals on the date, trying to decipher what he meant by what this guy meant that she went on a date with, right? Well, what did he mean by that? And what were the, you know, and he's like, there are no mixed messages. And she's like, wait, what? She's like, yeah, they're, they're, it's very clear with us guys. Like there are no mixed messages. Carrie's like, oh my gosh, I made a whole career of deciphering mixed messages, right? And I feel like now you're kind of coming into that conclusion of I'm not gonna mix this signal. I'm not gonna project all this junk out there, you know, and project what I think that they're thinking. I'm just gonna just be and just live my life. I'm just gonna move forward. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna be my own barrier. I'm not going to be my own problem anymore. You know, that's one thing I love about Scorpio is they, they do know how to get out of their own way. Scorpionic energy. It knows how to get out of its own way. It knows how to not be a problem for itself. I think right now there's like this relief and you may feel that sense of relief. It's like the, the less you use your brain, right? To try to figure things out in terms of other people, you know, it's like, oh my gosh, your life is going to be a million times easier. And I think you're ready for that to be a million times easier. You're ready for just the, the, the clarity of being, you know, just, you just are and let everybody think whatever anybody else is going to think. But the good news is, is by doing that, they're going to start seeing you as higher value. So the more you release, actually, the more you gain. It was all that resistance that was creating a problem. So go, take up space, go be seen, go be heard, go show up. People respect that. They value that. And it's a beautiful thing. And I think you're actually going to start seeing a lot of blossoming if you can really do that. Um, you're going to see a lot of, uh, incredible enhancement in your life and in your careers and your financial situations. If you can let people see you as a high valued individual. Okay. Hopefully that made sense. Sometimes with these readings, I feel like I'm just babbling all the time. So anyway, I hope that made some sense. Again, if you are a member on my site, please be sure to log in and check out the extendeds that I do for each Zodiac sign will be posted on the blog slash members area. Um, I just updated the server, so it should be operating like a million times faster. So hopefully it works out. Okay. All right. Have a great week, you guys. You know, I love you and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.